we're going to go over the Terminator artifact. And this is something you might run into when you're working with path tracers and doing some rendering. So I'm going to take a plane here, subdivide it a couple times, use proportional edit. I'm going to lift up um, this little corner here real quick, something like this. All right. And maybe pull this one up a little too. Why not? So next, I'm going to switch over to render preview, switch it to cycles. And right now my environment's just set to pure black. So I'm going to shift a, create a light. I'm going to do an area light real quick. Place it something like this, adjust the light power, turn it up a bit. Okay. So when you're using a path tracer, like cycles or anything else out there, any kind of ray tracer, basically, you're going to see something like this possibly happen, right? This is shaded flat right now. So we maybe expect this and you right click shade it smooth. You would expect that not to occur. And for the most part, it kind of goes away, but there's still a lot of little artifacts left over. Okay. So the way to look at this is if you were to create, let's say a UV sphere. Okay. Shade it smooth. And we pull this thing out over here. You can think of like the earth or the moon or something. And you have, you know, usually where the twilight takes place, somewhere like that. Okay. That's where the light ray terminates, more or less. If we look at this one even up close, turn the wireframes off, maybe point this light towards it a little, uh, we should see artifacts in this as well. It happens on any geometry using path tracer or ray trace, right? And uh, it's not as noticeable on these ones sometimes because they're a little bit higher resolution, but you can definitely see in that the curvature is much more predictable, but there's definitely little spots in here where that will occur. I'm trying to get one to show up. You got to view it from the right angle, right? So you can see kind of a little bit right here. They're terminating right there. Usually in, there's an edge underneath it, right? So that's usually where it occurs on an edge like that. All right. That is the terminator ray, the terminator artifact, whatever you want to call it. The solutions to fix this aren't as, awesome as you think they are. So if you made the light really small and it should actually become worse looking. All right. I'm not saying it will in this case, maybe it will, who knows? Um, but a lot of times it'll become worse looking. You can see over here, it looks really terrible. Um, but the solution is to actually use larger lights. You see how that works out? It starts to go away a little bit or use more geometry. So if we subdivide these a couple times, you'll see it's much better looking now. All right, so this is a problem that someone was running into when they were using uh, normal maps baked out in Marmoset, bringing them back to whatever Blender or wherever they brought them, and then using ray tracers, path tracing renderers. Normal maps are trying to shade accordingly. It's just shading, right? And the path tracer is casting shadow off of the geometry. So usually you get a fight between the geo and the shading of the normal. And so on certain objects, it can look very terrible, especially if you have any small discrepancies in the normal map, because it's just not going to correlate one-to-one -one with each other. And so this is something actually I ran into um, back when they were trying to put together ProRender for Blender. I was testing ProRender out and reporting bugs back to AMD. I didn't even know about the Terminator Ray at this or term, Terminator artifact at the time. I kept reporting it as a bug. It was driving me crazy, um, but it's not a bug. It's actually it's just kind of predicted behavior of path tracers. Who you know, right? And um, it's like technically kind of a bug in a way. Like users expect it not to exist, but it happens, right? And it happens in virtually all path tracers. There might be some workarounds for it. I don't usually uh, mess around with this stuff too much, but there's supposed to be um, a way to push the shadows around. You see like shadow terminator here, right? So you should be able to adjust this and um, tweak the values here per object. So that's something you could always do as well. Um, and this is going to be in a lot of software as well, where you can do that. And it should be able to influence or affect it. So if we put this back to zero, we can tweak these settings here a little bit and get it to go away. You see? Not entirely, apparently, but we can make it look a little bit better at least. All right. 
So when this is comboed up with a high to low poly bake using normal maps, uh, the results can be extremely bad, especially if your normal map bakes are not very tight to the model. And um, it's trying to push a lot of like big bevels or things like that, which I want to do another video on that. Um, but for now, I think we're going to leave this video here. And um, yeah, that's the uh, Terminator artifact. That's a couple different ways you can fix it. If you ever run into it, bigger lights, more geo, or try tweaking the um, Terminator shadows, right? And see if you can get some results out of it. Okay. Um, also, I was going to do this just because it seemed like a good idea. This is going to some, be something that may very well pop up when you're trying to do terrain, right? Like you're trying to sculpt some terrain and stuff. Because a lot of times you can't take it to as high of a resolution as you want. So if you're trying to do like cliff rocks and things like that, and you're trying to do it in path tracing software, you're going to find that it's going to become quite problematic. I'll subdivide that more. Even on things that are fairly dense, uh, you'll find that that ray setup becomes a little bit problematic. So I just want to sculpt real quick before we end the video. Hopefully you can kind of see the uh, example here and what's going on. Some pinching, some relaxing, all kinds of other fun stuff. Pinches should actually make it look better, I would think. But maybe it doesn't. Try to get it at like a 45 degree angle, or glancing angle at least. And that light is huge right now. Let's make it smaller. Okay, so if you're doing cliff rocks, this is something where it might show up as well. And you can see it's not very low resolution either, right? It's shade it smooth. Um, but we still get these artifacts on stuff like this. So we can tweak some of these values around, see what we can get going. But yeah, it's really hard to get rid of those things without adding more geo sometimes. Okay. So if that's the case, hey, this is why all these guys that work in VFX and movies and all that, they constantly say use um, quads and subdivision. Things like this come into play, right? So you can see no subdivision, something like this, okay, smooth it out with subdivision. And suddenly it looks a whole lot better, right? More geo. And so when you're doing large scenes, not everything needs to be... Um, like that, like if you have a distant background object way back here, that's a cliff rock or something. Maybe you have a couple of them, who knows? We'll just lay them out next to each other. Or actually, let's just scale one up. We'll do that instead. And um, take that subdivision away on it. You see, it's a much bigger piece now. It's in the background, the light, the way it cast onto it. It's not as big of an issue back here. And so when you're doing renders, I can select this thing. When you're doing renders, you know, things that are closer to the camera, more geo, things that are further away, you don't necessarily need as much. And uh, it works out a little bit better, right? So if you're running that problem, now you know what the Terminator Ray slash artifact is. And hopefully you have some, some ways of dealing with it, all right? I'll check you on the next one.